apologize I missed Senator Hawley's question because I was on the floor voting. I just want to return to some of the things he said. My crack staff gave me a summary, but I assume it must be incorrect. Um, was it your testimony that Brown v. Board was correctly decided? Yes. Uh, was it your testimony that you cannot say whether Shelby County and Burnabitch are correctly decided? Senator, there's an important distinction that if you will give me a moment of your time, I'd be happy to explain, but that is accurate. So was Roe v. Wade correctly decided? Senator, um, it is the law of the land and I would apply it. Was Lochner correctly decided? Senator, it is not really the law of the land anymore, but if I had been confirmed during that period, I would have applied it. Was Dred Scott correctly decided? Senator, um, it, uh, it is- Surely you can say Dred Scott was incorrectly decided. <laughs> Senator, uh, it was incorrectly decided. Why does it take these people that long to make it? <laughs> I mean, oh my goodness. Simple question. Was it decide, correctly decided or incorrectly decided? Give us, come on, tell us the answer. You know what to say. They don't want to, folks. So, so what's the distinguishing line of cases you will say is correctly decided and cases you won't say? Because it seems like you're willing to say that they're correctly decided if you like them, but if you don't like them, you can't comment on it. Senator, I do appreciate the question, and I think it is important, and I want... Senator, I do appreciate the question. No, you don't appreciate the question. You can't stand the question. What are you talking about? To clarify this, um, as a judicial nominee, I am bound by the Code of Ethics to ensure that any prospective litigant before me knows that they are getting an impartial and fair hearing where they will not be prejudged, where they will be given the opportunity to present their case. I think that it, it will not happen that a case of the permissibility of de jure segregation in schools would make its way before me. And as such, I am comfortable that I would not be violating my code of ethics by commenting on it. Um, okay. There are a handful of other cases that that may be true. Loving is probably one of them, Marbury versus Madison. Everything else, I would be very, very reluctant to give a potential litigant the wrong impression that they will not get a fair day in court. Um, what, about, what about abortion? That's a live issue in the courts. And I am not. I'm not going to say whether Roe v. Wade was correctly decided. That is correct. Okay. Um, well, you, you certainly had a lot of harsh things to say in the past about cases like Shelby and Bernovich and some of the issues that were adjudicated there. In fact, we just got notice last night about this article that just was published. Um, Here it comes, baby. Here comes Tom Cotton, golly gee whiz, he's looking through, he's gonna get that bomb of a question, here it comes. That you wrote, the title of it is the GOP campaign to make elections less free. Um, you, you noted in the letter you sent with the article um, that you did not see or approve of the title before it was published. That is correct. Which I can understand. Authors don't choose their own titles. I understand that. You didn't say whether you agree with it. Do you believe that GOP is campaigning to make elections less free? Senator, the entire piece uh, does not mention any political party, and that is because I am an advocate for the right to vote, and I would criticize any politician who would impede that right, irrespective of their political party. Do you think requiring photo ID is an impediment to vote? Uh, Senator, the Supreme Court in Crawford said that voter ID laws were not per se unconstitutional. However, if this circuit on Bonk said that a particular voter ID law was illegal. This is a case-by-case -case inquiry where we are fortunate enough to have precedent on, precedent that I would apply faithfully and without reservation. I know that, I think Senator Durbin said this article sounded like a speech he would give on the Senate floor. I agree. I don't think it proves the point. You may have been trying to prove, though, Senator Durbin. Um, Ms. Perez, you live in the New York City area? Uh, I live in Jersey City. Okay. How'd you get down here? I took the damn track. Okay. Did you have to show an ID to get your ticket or get on the Amtrak? I don't believe so, sir. Okay. Last time you flew, did you have to show an ID? I did, sir. Do you think that's an unfair restriction on your ability to travel? Uh, that is the uh, policy, and I am a rule follower, and I'm happy to abide by it because I can. Okay. If someone commits a murder, do you think it's fair to call them a murderer? If someone has been convicted oh, yeah. for murder yes. under, yes. If they 
commit rape, do you think it's fair to call them a rapist? Have they been convicted? Yes, convicted. Yes. Yes. So if they commit a felon, do you think it's fair to call them a felon? I think that that is a bit different because there's a temporal... See, why is that different? Why is that different? They have to think about this now, right? Can't call murder a murder. Can't call rapist a rapist. Can't call somebody, you know, uh, who commits a, a felony a felon. Oh, it hurts their feelings. It hurts my feelings. <laughs> Can't use that kind of words. Oh, God, i gee whiz. Rural issue, and I think that there's a raging policy debate on that. Because in the past, you've said that you don't like to use that word. But you I, said, I don't use words like felons to describe people. I mean, we don't describe people by a mistake that they made. I don't. I believe that every person is a child of God capable of being redeemed, and I never look at anybody and see the worst thing that they've ever done. If those convicted murderers or rapists get released from prison, often under misguided policies, do you think it's still fair to call them a murderer or a rapist? Uh, Irrespective of what their label was, sir, I would be on record as an advocate of trying to advocate for their right to vote if the criminal... Again, these people, they just continue to show their true colors, which is why it's good that we have the uh, Senate hearings to ask them their questions. And hopefully we've got enough people on the Republican side that can take a look at these nominees and when they have these you know, views and opinions that are just completely out of the norm, then we can, you know, vote them out of committee and uh, basically say, sorry, well, we don't want this person, okay, being in charge. There's enough, there's enough um, people already out there in, in government, in the bureaucracy that are just making up unbelievable policy, unbelievable, um, you know, uh, laws, unbelievable uh, opinions that they're giving uh, to the various, um, you know, parties involved to basically do everything that they can possibly do, that almost every time you take a look at anything coming out of Washington, D.C., why is it that when we look at what comes out of there, we're like, oh, most of us, normal, just average, everyday American citizens, we're going, we're scratching our heads, we're going, what? Where did that come from? That doesn't even make any sense. Really, they actually did that? They actually said that? They actually proposed that? And that's where these people are, these leftists, these, they're, they're not even moderates anymore, folks. They truly, truly are leftists. Like you said, you can't, you start asking them questions. What do you want to call somebody who's commits a felony? Uh, can you call him a felon? Well, you know, it's kind of temporal. You know, you got to think about it a little bit. You know, you got to decide. What about the victims? Can you say anything in, in for the victims? Or is always, why are we always giving, you know, uh, what, what's the reason why we're giving so much emphasis, so much positivity to the person or persons that are committing the crimes, but not enough sympathy, not enough empathy for the victims of the crimes? That's what's really sad, folks. Anyways, we thank you for watching. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. And I was your guest host today. My name is Dr. Shake. And if you haven't already done so, we would love you to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, like and share the video. You know what to do. And put your comments down below. What do you think of Miss Marina Perez? Do you agree with her? Disagree with her? Do you think she's just one of those leftists that are out there again that are just going to completely try to, you know, adjudicate? And, you know, from the bench rather than follow the laws. That's what we think here. Anyways, I'll leave with my final thought as I always do. And that is when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. We'll see you again next time, folks. Take care and stay safe.